All right, so I'm on this 99 Ford Ranger. I'm actually going to make another video for this for the flashers or the turn signals. And nobody in St. Louis has the turn signal flasher relay. So I got that video kind of on pause. I'm go going over to the windshield wipers. Uh, customer said when the wipers run for a while, they just stop. And I went ahead and pulled a wiring diagram. But I haven't been able to recreate the problem here in the shop. It's been I've had them run for about 20 minutes. And they're, they're working perfectly. I pulled the wiring diagram on it. And you can see here, you know, it's got uh, a high-low relay in it. It has a run park relay in it. It has this uh, generic electronic module that powers it. And then you got the actual motor itself. There's quite a bit of wiring and relays and uh, modules related to this motor here. Uh, yeah, because you got the uh, relay control and all that it comes from this generic electronic module that Ford put in there. So, anyway, I can't get it to do it in the shop right now. And he, uh, it's quite a bit cooler in St. Louis right now than it has been. So, uh, you know, I told him, just guessing, it's probably the motor is getting hot. And shutting down for a while because if you let it cool down it'll run again uh but i can't guarantee that's what it is without actually recreating it here in the shop or seeing it catching it in the, in the act and he just said go ahead and put a motor in it uh because he wants you know wants to get it fixed that's the most likely thing so even though i don't necessarily i normally don't like doing this uh in this situation we're gonna go ahead and just change the motor it's the original motor on there and hope for the best. I, I mean, it's probably a 90%, probably 8 to 10 or 9 to 10 chances that that's what it is. I would like to see, like I said, I would like to be able to test it or catch it in the act and test it, but that's not possible. It's not. We I took it for a drive and had the wipers on the whole time and they wouldn't shut off. And then I came back here and ran them for quite a while. They never shut off. So, uh, like I said, it's quite a bit cooler in St. Louis here in October than it was uh, when this first started popping up. So, uh, anyway, we're just going to go through the steps of changing the motor, and uh, if it does it again down the road, then we will uh, address it. And hopefully, you know, it's going to have to come to the point where we can catch it in the act, regardless if, if this doesn't fix it. But uh, we'll go and get this motor off and get it changed out. Looks like we'll have to move this pigtail out of the way and then get to the actual motor pigtail. And there's some bolts, so we'll start on that now and uh, go from there. All right, so I got the motor loose. Uh, you just take out these four eight millimeter bolts around this this uh, mounting plate here, and then uh, it's kind of hard to see, but you get back in here, and there's an eight millimeter bolt right here that comes off that connects your wipers to this motor. It's splined, so you don't have to worry too much about that. But uh, it's kind of hard to get to. You, once you, uh, it'll be back pretty deep in there. You can pull it out a little bit, and then. Once you start to loosen it, it'll actually bring the wipers up a little bit, about right there. And uh, then you can, it actually brings this out more, so it's easier to get a hold of. And that's an 8mm open end. So you just get the 8mm uh, behind there and uh, just loosen it up, work its way out. All right, so if yours is like mine, it's going to be on there pretty good. You know, there's rust buildup um, and all that good stuff. So after I got the bolt out, I just used this and, of course, this. And all I did was just uh, kind of put this under that arm there, and then I beat downward on it. Uh, a couple good whacks to knock it off. It's pretty tight. You won't get it off by hand probably. But if you just stick something like this under there and, like I said, beat down on it, pop it out. And that releases it from the windshield wiper arms. And now we'll uh, obviously take this bracket off here from the motor. we got to take this. So it looks like 8 millimeter. Take these three off. That'll release that from the motor. Put the new, And then we'll put this on the new motor.
So this thing should slide out. There's a little rubber bush in here. And uh, this is the old motor, 20 years old. You can see here. Go ahead and put it on one way. It's got a slot here for the wipers. So that's good. You can't really screw that up putting it back together. So, and these have a core at O'Reilly. So save these, put them back in the box that you get the new one from, and take them back and get your 15 bucks back. And anyway, we'll get the new motor and get that mounted and get it going. All right, so I got this uh, mounting bracket mounted back onto the new motor. It's just opposite of how you took it off, the three, the three uh, eight millimeter bolts. And I got this back on. Uh, I went ahead and I can see back there. I went ahead and lubed uh, this thing right here and put that bolt back into the back. It's kind of hard to get the camera back there. It's right there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shoot some uh, lube on these bushings here. And uh, anyway, it's, you got to do some finagling to get that back, but I can only go on one way, which is nice. So there's a flat side and a curved side and then two, two notches. That's the only way it can go in. So... I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, spray some lube on those bushings back there and then we'll rotate this and get it back in there and uh, bolt this back up to the firewall. You can see here I got the uh, motor back up against the firewall. When you're putting that back in, it doesn't necessarily want to go in uh, all that easy. If you use your other arm and reach around the hood, you know, put your hand right here on the wipers. And kind of move those around a little bit. Uh, it'll help get that back in there because it has to clear that rod and the bracket that it holds on to. And uh, like I said, it doesn't want to just fall right back in there. So, you know, use your right hand and uh, move the wipers around until you can get this motor back up in there. So I got all four uh, bolts started. So we'll just run those down real quick. And I got the wrong socket. A bad glare today on these lights. There's actually four on this. There's a ground also. Don't forget to put that back on. There's one down here. There's two on each side. I'm gonna get a longer extension. Alright, kinda of sorry I can't really show you more. It's just the angle of everything on this and the lighting. Uh, so I got the four bolts in. There's one hiding under there, one hiding there. There's one hiding there and one there. Now, don't forget to put your ground strap back on. Just right here. And, uh, you know, it's got a little 10 millimeter nut. So you don't want to forget that. And then all that's left at this point is just plug in the pigtail. And then uh, we will uh, put this back where we got it. This is your main engine harness here. And what I did here was just took it loose. It's got a little pop clip right here. Just get a screwdriver back in there, push down on it, and this will pull out of that bracket. So all that's left now is just to test it. Which it's a new part, so you hope it works, but you never know with these uh, all these Chinese parts nowadays. So, uh, next step be to turn on the key and make sure it works. All right, so I went to test it, and uh, this happened. <laughs> you see, this one's not doing anything. I don't know if he'll notice that or not. Should we just ship it like that and leave it, or uh, should we fix it? Uh, of course, I'm joking. We'll go ahead and fix it, but this just goes to prove even somebody does it every day has. We're running into issues like this. Um, so Ford put this little access panel right here. It's 
held on by three bolts. That allows you access to uh, the other side. You can see here, it's just a plastic bushing down there. Get my hand out of the way. That's plastic bushing, it just pops onto there. And I guess when I was finagling it around, trying to get this motor out, it popped out. So we'll just pop it back in and uh, put that cover back on. That should fix the issue. But luckily, see, this is a steel cowl on this car, on these trucks. You know, a lot of cars have plastic cowls. You can pull the whole cowl off and get access to all this. Well, this is this is all steel. It's all uh, welded on. So, you, you know, really can't, there's not much access to this. So Ford put that little access panel there. So we'll pop that back on and uh, test it again. Hopefully this time it, both sides will work. All right, so they're both back together. You can see uh, this little access hole pop back on. It's actually pretty hard to get back on, which it should be. Uh, it's hard to get your hand in there and your fingers in there to get it on. But I took a pair of uh, channel locks, got them in there, and snapped it back on. So that's all working now. Um, basically, we'll just put that panel back on. And we should be about done with this. So, and that, those panel is, bolts are tiny on that, it is 5.5 5 millimeters for those little bolts on the panel, this little access panel. There's three of those, so we'll put those three back in and then uh, we'll finish this up. So I guess that kind of wraps up this video on the windshield wipers on this Ranger. The only thing I'd reiterate is uh, if you have a similar problem on your Ranger where the wipers aren't working, uh, there's a lot that goes into this wiper system. So don't just assume that it's the motor on yours. Uh, if your motor's not working, then you, it's easy to make the checks at the motor and uh, see if it's getting the proper voltage and, and signals and everything. But like I said, you got this module here. This is called the GEM. It's a ge generic electronic module. And then you have the two relays and of course you have your regular power and all that that goes to your motor here so it's it's not just a simple switch to motor there's a lot of things a lot of players involved so if you have a similar problem make sure to check it out real good like i said on this one we couldn't really because it was working i ran them for a good 20 minutes they never stopped working uh so we're just taking kind of a educated gamble at this point and assuming that the motor's bad um if something else pops up, we'll do another video on it, on how to track it down. But, pretty confident that's what it was. Uh, and I normally don't like doing that, just swapping a part out. But, uh, you know, I only get this car so many times, and, it, you know, you don't want to... Uh, I mean, what the only other option I would have is drive it around for a couple hours till it does it. And then get back to the shop, or take the tools with me, and, and test it. Because, of, from what I understand, it would do it, and then... Uh, a few minutes later they would work again so you know more than likely the motor's getting hot and then it shuts off and then turns back on so anyway um it's not what i like to do normally but that's what we did on this one we changed the motor out and it's like i said it's an educated guess and we'll go from there for some ungodly reason uh nobody in st louis has the flasher module or relay for that truck i don't know why it's a 99 ford ranger probably one of the most successful nameplates in American history. And these, these auto parts stores, I mean, we're in St. Louis too. It's not like I'm in the middle of nowhere. So these auto parts stores just complicated things so much more for, for uh, do-it-yourselfers or mechanics. They never have anything in stock. That's a whole nother rant. But uh, so tomorrow I'll either go to the dealer or find out how much it is for the dealer. I'll hit the junkyard and get a couple of them and uh, get the flashers fixed on this car that's no that's a whole other video whole different video and then uh, i said something about the brakes earlier uh what happened was his neighbor had put semi-metallic brakes on it and evidently it's squeaking quite a bit when he comes to a stop which is pretty common on semi-metallic because there's actual metal in the brake pad itself so when you hit the brake you're actually metal on metal i mean it's not a lot of metal but it's there and I said we could put some ceramic pads on it, but he didn't want to do that because the pads are still almost new. So other than changing the pads or, or something like that, there's not a whole lot we can do about the squealing uh, here and there on that. So we're leaving that alone. So uh, that's pretty much it for uh, wiper motor on 99 Ford Ranger. And we'll 
the next video will be on the flashers and then i got a few other ones coming up so we'll see you on the next ones get those hoopties get all these hoopties back on the road